Hello everyone. Today I want to talk to you about Content Gatherer. That is a handy little tool that lets you include every referenced file from a Dash Studio scene into a zip file so that you can go and open it successfully on another computer. So you can share it with other users, you can bring it across to a render node computer, and you can also archive it without having to worry about, hey, have I actually included the correct files in that? So a common scenario for me for archiving is that I make a promo like this and then I have a different texture set on the skirt that lives in a different drive in a different directory that isn't a Dash Studio library. So it's like a custom textures here. This one is another custom texture that I've just unceremoniously dumped into uh, maybe on the desktop or something. It's a PSD file actually. And Dash Studio of course needs all of these things to open the scene successfully. Yeah, this is the logo that I've made here. And this was not part of the original scene. I've just, I think I've just dumped that into here. So the classic problem is that if I open this on another computer or in six months time, then the likelihood of some of the files that are missing is very high and I can't really afford to do that. So this is where Content Gatherer comes in. This is made by Dimension 3D. It works for Mac and Windows, but it's nowhere to be found inside Dash Studio. So it's a standalone program that you have to open. Sadly, Dimension 3D, Ralph, he passed away a few years ago, so there won't be any updates to this software anymore. Just wanted to let you know that, but the script works really well. And let me show you where it lives and how to use it. So on Windows, you don't really find it inside Dash Studio. The easiest way is once you've installed it with Install Manager on the Installed tab, you'll find it here under Launchable Products. You can also search for that if you have multiple things popping up, if you want to whittle that list down a little bit. And then on these three little dots here, click on that and choose show installed files. The same works on the Mac OS as well. So it'll go and open this and it'll show you where the program lives and then you can go and launch it from here. So this opens an explorer or finder window and that is where that file is. So that's the exit. There's also a PDF for documentation. You can read that. It's very extensive. I'm just going to double click the exit file and then this comes up. So the way this works is there's a top section here that will hold or display a list of files that will be included with your zip file. And then there's a bottom section here that will show you what is referenced from the top files. It sounds a little cryptic when I say that. So essentially you go and click on add and then you add one or multiple DUF files to the content gatherer. So I'm going to use this one, just a single one. This is the boutique promo. This is exactly that file. And I'm going to go and hit open. And then that's that. A green dot means the program has validated this file. A red dot would mean, hey, I know it should exist, but I haven't had a look if it really does. So you can add multiple files to this at this point. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go and select this and then I'm going to hit analyze here. That will now go through this file and display a list of other files that Studio needs to successfully load the scene. So the way the files work is that they don't include everything that gets loaded into the scene. They just reference what is supposed to be found. And they do this by saying, hey, anything that's mapped in any of my content libraries here, that is where I should be finding that. So it doesn't say runtime textures is specifically in this or that or that library. It just says in any of them, in one of them, it should be there. So it doesn't matter if you have one or multiple content libraries mapped. It just says, well, in any of them, this should be in it. So in order to check if that is the case, so currently we don't really know where exactly that is. So Content Gatherer can't include that in a zip file. Now don't click anywhere once you've clicked analyze because the next step needs to be you click resolve down here and that will now go and resolve all these into a proper hierarchy that it can go and zip up. Let me go and do that. Resolve. There we go. It goes skips through them and it turns all these red dots into green dots and it also adds the full path on any of your directories in here. So these files here, they're all in the C drive, but as I go and scroll down, there's one that's on the I drive, and then this one hasn't been found. So this is a red dot here. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. And then there's more on the I drive, more on the C drive, different directories and so forth. So this is why this is so important for Content Gather to go through all these files because it needs to resolve them. It also goes and puts them into this top window here. So all the files that have been resolved end up in the top window. So that means anything here can now be zipped up. Now, anything that has a red dot is something that it could not find. So the resources, DT, HDR, ruins, 
HDR image, that is our default ruins HDRI that is included with that studio. And it is located in an odd directory, namely in the resources file of the actual program installation. That's why it hasn't found that. You can go and click exclude. And if you have this on files where you think, yeah, this is always not found, you can go and add that to this list. So you have to put the full path into this list down here and hit add, and then it won't look for that file anymore, like magnet and base.obz and stuff. Those are things that might always come up with issues and it will go and not flag those as errors. In this case, because we know Dash Studio can find this, so I don't need to include this up here. It's a default resource. But this one here, that wasn't even included in a library that was just in a loose directory. That was my boutique logo that was totally included. So that's all cool. And it's also up here in this file. Now I can add other files to this if I wanted to do that. And I might actually want to do that. I'll just go and click add again, like this blend file from one of the mannequins I've made. I also might want to include the thumbnail of the boutique promo file. So I'm going to go and include that as well. Just hit open and then it'll append this at the bottom of the list and they're already green and validated. So that's all good. This is exactly what I need to recreate the full scene. Now, in order to turn this into a zip file, I have to click up here under file list and then it gives me a second window that lets me choose the encoding for the zip file or if I wanted to split it into multiple parts. Some vendors like Renderosity had this really silly limitation that your content files couldn't be larger than, you know, whatever, 50 megabytes or so you can split that. I don't need to do that. Just click zip and then the 239 megabytes and the 190 files will be turned into a little file here. I might just call this one demo and let it rock. So down here you can see the progress on larger scenes. This might take a couple of minutes and then eventually you have a zip file. And we're going to go through this one more time because I wanted to show you a little oddity that I found that you might come across as well. I'll go and close this. In fact, I'm going to close the content gatherer and show you what happened and why this is actually beneficial. So let's take a look at my desktop where I have the demo zip file. So if I go and double click that and look inside, I have exactly the library structure that I'm expecting. The boutique logo PSD in the kind of root directory. And in here I have the blend file and I have my actual scene file and I also have my thumbnail file. So this is exactly the state of affairs right now in Dash Studio. If I wanted to extract that and I'll go to the zip file, right click on it and hit extract all. Let it extract that into an actual top folder. So demo in my case, that's perfect. And this is in fact the directory that I can now go and map in a new instance of Dash Studio and then go and load my file. So let me show you what would happen on my other computer here. So I'm going to go and unmap this file here, the works directory. That's where that was part of. And if I were to go and try to open that scene file Again, this boutique scene file, which is this one, which is now in its original location. If I go and open that up, then I'll get a bunch of errors because Dash Studio can't find certain files, namely my custom files, maybe also products that are installed in a different directory. So when we see this and just keep going with the load process, then I'll see that something isn't quite right in my scene. There we go. So I can see that my logo is missing here and there's no textures on the skirt. And that's because Tastry didn't know where they were. But lo and behold, see what happens if I go and right click on my Dash Studio formats now here in the content library. If I right click on that and then I'll say add base directory and then I'll go to my desktop where that resides. Demo was the correct one here. So I'm going to go and select that folder and then that folds itself down. And now in demo, I have the boutique promo and in there I now have a clickable icon thanks to the fact that we've also included the thumbnail. So if I double click on that now, then the scene gets loaded fine because all the files I've referenced are now included. Is that cool or what? So now you can go and save that file, the zip file on an archive drive and you can bring it back at any time. You can load it up on another computer. Look at that. No problems here. I've got this logo here. I've got the textures on the skirt and that is that. So there's just two things I wanted to tell you that you might encounter. First of all, where does Content Gather actually look for these file resolve paths? I mean, why did it resolve some and why not others? So let's go and open that up again and do the same thing again under add. Then I'm going to go and include my DUF file up here and then I'll say analyze and then 
all this happens. If you do something else, if you click on any of these, so if you click on something and then you say resolve, then you might find that nothing really happens or only one file gets resolved. It's a small bug. In order for that to work, it I'd have to click on every single file and resolve that manually, or you can select multiple and resolve those manually. If you have a ton of them, you just have to go and select the first one, scroll down and then select the last one and then resolve all of them. But um, if we go back to the one file that didn't quite work, this one, why did it not look in this location and why did it look in these locations? What is that governed by? Well, there's no user facing list of directories that it would look through here, none that I could find. So what it actually does is it looks at anything that is mapped in the release version of Dash Studio under the Dash Studio formats as well as the POSA format. So whatever is mapped here, it will look through when it resolves these files. Now, this is important because some of us use more than one version of Dash Studio. So I have the public beta and I also have a publishing build and it does not look at those. So if you were to open a scene in the publishing build or in the public beta and it works and it can resolve all files there, if Dash Studio doesn't give you any load errors and then you start using the content gatherer and it starts not finding certain things, so you think, hey, what's going on there? Make sure the file can be read without errors in the release version of Dash Studio, and then Content Gatherer will be able to resolve them. So that is what we do. Add a file, hit resolve to resolve it, add other files that you might want in here, like, you know, foreign files, OBJs, blend files, marvelous designer projects, that sort of thing. Then hit file list and then just hit zip, and then that creates a zip file for you. I hope this was helpful and I hope this will help you archive your projects and also share them to other computers that don't have all the content installed. If somebody wants to send you a scene and say, hey, I've built it, you refine it, you render it, or you refine it and give it back to me. Or if you wanted to distribute whole libraries, Content Gatherer can do it. I'll leave a link to it in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.